Oops. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, unit 13, day 3 today. Um, we're going to talk today about those same sum and difference formulas. But today we're going to talk about them on a triangle. So we've done a lot of draw triangles before um, when we worked with um, some unit circle values or even just some points um, when we were starting off finding sine and cosine values. Um, we worked with a lot of triangles. But I just wanted to go back and kind of remind you about in this class how we draw these triangles. And ours are going to be right triangles. Okay, so how to draw these right triangles. So let me remind you that we put x on the x-axis, but we don't put y on the y-axis. Um, we do put theta, the angle that we're working with, at the origin. Um, and finally, and probably the most important part, is to remember that the hypotenuse is always positive. Okay, so even if you're working with something that's going down into like the third or the fourth quadrant, um, and maybe like your x value and your y value is negative, your hypotenuse is always positive, and that's going to make a big difference today. Okay, so as we draw these triangles, X is on the x-axis, y is not on the y-axis. Um, theta, or the angle that you're working with, is at the origin. And the hypotenuse is always positive. All right, so we're going to keep working with these same formulas. And as we've been working with these formulas, we've been working with two different angles. And so that's going to continue today. Um, what's funny about these is they often call them X and Y. So don't get that confused with the X and the Y that's on your triangle. So don't get those confused with your X and your Y axis. It's just a name that they're calling the angles that you're using. So instead of theta, they may call it X and Y. Um, it's the same thing as alpha and beta in your formula. Okay, so unfortunately they kind of use that same variable, which I don't really love, but that's the way that they do it. Okay. Um, let me also remind you before we jump into that too far of where kind of our um, quadrantal angles are on our axes. So this is pi over 2 up here at the top and pi and 3 pi over 2 down here at the bottom and either 0 or 2 pi over there on that side. And that's the information they're going to give us um, to tell us where to draw the triangle. Okay, so sometimes they'll give us some information about the quadrant, and sometimes they'll tell us to draw it between those angles right there. Okay, um, while we're right there, let me remind you about all students take calculus. That's going to be handy on some of them because they might tell us, for example, um, that we're working in a quadrant where sine is positive and cosine is negative. So sine is positive here and here, but sine is positive and cosine is negative here. So I know that I would be in the second quadrant. So it's a little bit like a puzzle that you have to kind of figure out what they're telling you. So don't forget about your all students. Take calculus there. Okay. Um, finally, we're going to be working a lot with Pythagorean theorems. So let me remind you about some Pythagorean triples that make our life a little bit easier. So all of those combinations right there, um, if you plug them into Pythagorean theorem, they would come out to be equal. Uh, what's important there is that the biggest number has to be the hypotenuse. The biggest one has to be the hypotenuse. All right, 
So let me jump into an example here. I'm going to start with some given information. So I'm going to start by telling you that the sine of x is equal to 12 over 13 and that x is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. And then I'm also going to give you some information about y. So I'm going to say that the cosine of y is negative 3 fifths and that y is between pi over 2 and pi. Okay, so all of that will be given to you. Okay, so let me give you a second to jot that down. Okay, so I'm going to start by using that given information to draw my two triangles. So go ahead and draw two triangles on two separate axes. I have a lot of people try to put them together on one axis sometimes and it gets really confusing. Okay, so go ahead and draw two separate triangles on two separate axes and then I'll show you what the questions look like. Okay, so I'm going to start with my X triangle. So this one's going to work over here with X. Okay, my X triangle told me to draw between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so from 0 to pi over 2, I'm working in my first quadrant right here. Okay, so I know that my triangle is going to be in my first quadrant. Okay, so to draw my triangle, I'm going to put X on X. I'm going to put Y not on Y. I'm going to put the angle that I'm working with, which in this case happens to be called X, at the origin, and my hypotenuse is going to be positive. Okay, when I think about X, they've given me sine, and I know that sine is my opposite over my hypotenuse. So I know my opposite side is 12, my hypotenuse is 13, so this is going to be a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So my missing side here is 5. And here's my 5, 12, 13. Right okay, any questions about how I drew X? Okay, now let's jump over here and draw a Y. All right, so I'm going to draw my axes. And again, it's really, really helpful if you draw them on two separate axes. This one's not so bad, but we'll get into some where they overlap if you draw them on the same set of axes. All right, on this one, they're telling me that Y, this angle, is between pi over 2 and pi. All right, so pi over 2 is here. Pi is here. I want to draw my triangle in the second quadrant. All right, in the second quadrant, I'm going to put X on X y not on y and the angle that I'm working with which they've called y at the origin. Okay, by giving me cosine they've given me my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is 3, my hypotenuse is 5, I know my hypotenuse is positive, so I'm going to let the 3 take the negative sign. Okay, I also know that because the 3 is going to the left, which is a negative direction. Okay, so if you're going to the left or down, be sure that your value is negative, except for the hypotenuse. Okay, this one goes with a 3, 4, 5. So 4 is going to go right there, and it's going up, so it can be positive. Okay, any questions on that part? 
Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is take your given and draw your two triangles. All right, then it's going to ask you some questions like this. Okay, so it's going to ask me to find the sine of x plus y. Okay, I like to go ahead and write down my formula so that I know what I'm filling in. If you can do it without the formula, that's okay. All right, but I like to write down my formula. All right, so I'm going to start with my sum of sine formula. All right, so go over here to sine. I've got my sum formula. And so I'm going to do sine cosine plus cosine sine. Okay, now they're using x's and y's, so I'm going to as well. So this is going to be my alpha and my beta. So I'm going to do sine cosine plus cosine sine. So it's the same formula we've been using, just changed into x and y. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the ones on the unit circle. I'm going to put some parentheses down here so I kind of know what I'm trying to find, what I want to fill in. And I'm also going to work with one angle at the time. Okay, so I'm going to start with x. So I'm going to get my sine and my cosine value for x first. Okay, so for x, I'm going to go look at my x triangle right here. And I'm going to say that sine is my opposite over my hypotenuse. It's what was up here in my given. Okay, so my sine is going to be 12 over 13. Okay, my cosine value for x is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So cosine is going to be 5 over 13. Any questions about where I found those values? Okay, now I'm going to go deal with my y's. Okay, so for y, I'm going to get the information from my y triangle. Okay, so make sure you match up which variable. All right, so cosine is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Again, it's what's up here on this one in my given. So my cosine is going to be negative 3 over 5. And sine's going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse. So this one will be 4 over 5. Okay, any questions about all of that? Okay. All right. So to put them together, I'm going to multiply top times top and bottom times bottom. And here's where if you want to use a calculator, it might come in handy. Sometimes the numbers get kind of big. So top times top gives me negative 36. And bottom times bottom gives me 65 plus, and over here, top times top gives me 20, and bottom times bottom gives me 65. And usually these come out with a common denominator. I can't really think of a time when they don't. I hate to say always, but usually they do. Okay, so when I add, I need a common denominator. I already have that. I'm going to add the tops. So negative 36 plus 20 gives me negative 16. And on the bottom, I have 65. And that right there is my answer. Um, unfortunately, unlike the unit circle ones, there's not really a way of checking these in your calculator. You just kind of have to go with it. Okay, okay any questions on that one? Yeah. Um, if the quiz be over this, um, we'll do mostly the unit circle stuff. There's one of these. There's only five questions. Yeah, I didn't take it over. Okay. All right, let me give you one to try. Um, you try, using those same two triangles, try the cosine of x plus y. So use that same given information. Try the cosine of x plus y. Thank you. 
assume this in the second question. Is this going to be an X on X, Y, not on Y, and then connect back at Z? Yes. Okay. Yes. No hurry, but check yours when you're ready. Okay, any questions on that one? I want to work a tangent together because just like with the unit circles, the tangents are a little bit trickier. Um, the problem with the tangents is that you don't always have a common denominator on the top. So I want to review finding common denominators again. Okay. All right. Again, any questions on number two before I move to a tangent? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's do a tangent and then I want to show you one where you have to kind of figure out a puzzle on where the quadrant is. All right. So let's find the tangent, I'm going to use those same triangles, x minus y. Okay, so I'm going to do a difference question with tangent. And again, these get just a little bit harder because of a common denominator issue. All right, so go look at your formulas. I'm doing a difference for tangent. That's going to be tangent x minus tangent y. And on the bottom, change signs. 1 plus tangent x times tangent y. There's our formula that we're using. Turn the page, can't see my triangles anymore. <laughs> All right, so tangent's going to be my opposite over my adjacent. So I'm going to start with the tangent of x. So on my x triangle, my opposite over my adjacent gives me 12 over 5. So my opposite over my adjacent gives me 12 over 5. Okay, then I'm going to have a minus. And then I'm going to do the tangent of y. So my tangent over here is my opposite over my adjacent, which is going to give me negative 4 thirds. Okay. <laughs> All 
All right, then what's nice about tangent is that on the bottom, my two values just repeat 12 over 5 and negative 4 thirds. Okay, so just like unit circle with your tangent equation, you only have to find two values. You don't have to find all four. Okay, let me go ahead and make my minus a negative into a positive. Okay, and again, however you like to find common denominator, feel free to do that. Okay, um, you will often see me use that smile method again. It's one that I really like. So if you're having trouble with common denominator, feel free to use that. If you're good at common denominator, just go with your method. Either way will work. All right, so I'm going to combine on the top. So smile says I'm going to do top times bottom, which gives me 36. I'm going to use the sign that's in between them, so plus. And then I'm going to do bottom times top, which gives me 20, all over my common denominator of 15. Okay, so multiply top times bottom, bottom times top, and then bottom times bottom to get your common denominator. Okay. All right, here's a trick that I like to do on the bottom. So on the bottom, I'm going to multiply these and then add to the 1. Okay, so what I like to do is multiply these together first. So I've got a plus sign here, but this is going to be negative. So I'm going to say minus, and I'm going to do top times top and bottom times bottom. And I do that first because now I can change my 1 into 15 over 15 and have my common denominator ready to go. Do you see what I did there? Okay, so if I multiply these together first, I know that my common denominator is going to be 15. So I can change that 1 into 15 over 15, and now I've got my common denominator ready to go here. Is everybody okay with me doing that? Okay. All right, so let's go on the top. 36 plus 20 is going to give me 56 over 15. And on the bottom, that's going to give me negative 33. Okay, finally, when I have one fraction on the top and one fraction on the bottom, now I can go use my algebra and do keep it, change it, and flip it. Okay, so multiply by the reciprocal, or keep it, change it, flip it, but don't do that until you are down to one fraction on the top and one fraction on the bottom. Don't try to do it when you have multiple fractions. Okay. All right, so what can happen to my 15s here? Cancel out. That's right. Good. Cancel out. So then I've got a negative times a positive. Oops, I don't need to write my equal sign twice. <laughs> so that's going to give me negative 56 over 33. on that one. Okay, I'm going to show you one given where you have to kind of work a puzzle to figure out where to draw the triangles, and then I'm going to work another tangent question to go along with that one, because again, I think those tangents are the hardest, so we'll work another tangent here in just a minute. Okay, everybody good on number three? Okay, all right, last one. Let me start with some given information. I'm going to tell you that the tangent of x is 3 fourths and the cosine of y is 5 over 13. And I'm going to tell you that neither one of those, let's say neither instead of not, I'm going to tell you that neither triangle is in quadrant 1. So 
I know everything's positive in quadrant one, but I know both of these triangles are not in quadrant one. So I'm gonna have to figure out where else those values are positive. Okay, I'm gonna jump down just a little bit, give myself a little bit of room right here. You'll see why in just a minute. And I'm gonna go draw my two axes. Okay, so let's start with X. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and right here underneath X, write my all students take calculus. Okay, they have given me a positive tangent value, but they've also told me that I cannot work in quadrant one. Okay, let me just go through all of them. I can't be in quadrant two because in quadrant two only sine is positive and in quadrant four only cosine is positive. So the only place I can draw my triangle is in quadrant three because that's the other place where tangent is positive. Okay, remember all students take calculus tells you where values are positive. So if I can't be in quadrant one the only other place I can be for tangent to be positive is in quadrant three. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna draw my triangle in quadrant three. So I'm gonna put X on X, Y not on Y. I'm gonna put my angle, which is X, at the origin. And again, even though we're going in a downward direction, that hypotenuse is still going to be positive. So watch out for that. Okay, by giving me tangent, they've given me my opposite over my adjacent. But be careful here because I'm going to put my 3 and my 4, but because of their direction, what do I know about both of them? They're negative. That's right. Good. So this is going to be negative 3 and negative 4 because I'm going to the left and down. But again, the hypotenuse is positive, so my 3, 4, 5, my 5 is going to be positive. So watch out for that. Those third quadrant ones are really tricky. Okay, let's do the same thing over here for y. Alright, so if I do all students take calculus, and my directions tell me that I can't be in quadrant 1, Where's the only other place where cosine is positive? Four. Four, that's right, good. So I'm gonna be right here in quadrant four. Okay, in two and three, cosine is negative. All right, so in four, X is on X, Y is not on Y. Put your angle at the origin. I quit drawing my right angles in, they're right triangles. All right, this time I'm given cosine, which is my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, so what's my missing side going to be here? That's right, good, 12, good. And because it's going down, what do I know about it? Negative, that's right, good. So this is going to be a negative 12, good. Okay, so half the battle on these is getting the triangle strong correctly. So get some practice with that. Be very careful with those, okay? Okay, so the only question I'm going to ask you about this one is a tangent that is a sum. Okay. All right, so give that one a try. Try to find the tangent that's a sum on this one, and we'll check your answers along the way as you go. I'll go ahead and write the formula up there for you.
create a check where you plugged in in your common denominator. Before you do keep it, change it, flip it. No hurry, but if you're ready, check yours. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the little quiz, again, there's just five questions. I'm going to give you 20 minutes to work by yourself, and then I'm going to give you 20 minutes if you can work with other people, work with a group, check your answers with a buddy, whatever you want to do. Okay? All right, so you can use your notes, you can use your worksheet, you can use your calculator, use all of your information there. Again, 20 minutes by yourself, so think quietly for 20 minutes, and then I'll give you 20 minutes to work together. And a great All your resources that you have there. I'll start with that. 